the bootstrap uh, new children, clean one, and the application will be 6Y, and start to build the package. So we can ensure that every time the package is going to be automated and consistently reproduced. And then, and also for the, uh, you know, for the uh, new software project, you can see that the OPS support the different distributions and also multiple different applications, but only one source software. So just you have this kind of value infrastructure that you just one source code and OBS to handle the classic way has many, many work, right? OBS handle all this automation for you. Yeah. You automatically uh, build the library and then you will uh, you have a, a building a, a workflow. So just imagine that you have some repositories for production. But uh, sometimes you need to build a new software, new library, you can actually publish that, you need to test it. Right? So OBS builds in a branch. So you QA, you fetch binary, and do the test before you let it into the production repository. So here, this that they see, uh, have the review process. So when the, the package is submit and the build, right, you can do the test. And then you submit here, and QA can have something to, to test. Uh, for our internal usage, we have a automate, we have a, a shift a robot to fetch those new library to test. Once that test passed, okay, then we get uh, some some trigger updated status. And then still have some human being to approve the value to the production master. See, this is an example. The library used and automatically published into this kind of uh, repository. So that on the daily basis, you can just update you know, things to so, all upgrade uh, your packages. Yeah, and for user, yes, this is just a advantage that this OBS can have a repository for you. It's easy to use. Okay, let's look at uh, the feature in the book. Here is the OBS has a building uh, CDS like a version control. So each source package you upload, they can get tracked on the, on the revision control system on OBS. So if you do something that you found that uh, this source package upload and you know, some configuration, then you can just you know, check out the previous one and find out what it did it goes to and see the differences. And also have uh, you know, automatically calculate the, the build dependency and the stage of the package you build. Just imagine when you build the package, but the package has lots and lots of dependencies. The OBS will automatically calculate which package should be first, the priority. So you can see that we imported all the source packages and you can start to review. And also, if anything omit the build dependency, it will show that it can be solved. So if you click on the um, result of all, they can see, oh, what kind of uh, real dependency is missing in the repository, for example. Okay. And then also uh, the basis control list, so we can control that in uh, different project, sometimes we know the team, different team will have different product, and we have a different project on the OBS system. And you can have a different uh, access control for different people who can access, who can modify, Upload yeah, it goes to repositories. Okay, those are the, the, the benefit and the, the next feature. And then, how do we set up? Uh, set up is easy. Now, uh, we have that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the baby already. So, I also prepared the data container. So, what you do, you just need to choose your own uh, Linux distribution. And then, with the .io and the Docker Composer package install. And then you can fetch the OBS out of the images. And then once you fetch the other repository, there's a readme file and it will show you that how you can view the, the doc content locally. And also once you view that locally, then you can use a doc composer doc. And then the repository is done with the, the doc containers. So here is the example that we, we just have demo. So we use a OBS API. And for the EMS, for the container. 
So here, it just access to your uh, OBS antenna. Once you uh, bring it up, then you just go to the URL of OBS API, and then you see that your antenna was this kind of the, the default uh, OBS page. And you can uh, see uh, the, also the, the, the username and password in the daily configuration. Then you log in with people admin uh, user, and the password is uh, open source. And once you log in, then you see that the page, and you can start to uh, configure. But uh, from configure and GUIs takes too many steps. So I try to make things simple. So we provide uh, a script to do the automatic setup. Also, we could use this for the testing. So you need to uh, set up the, the DOD. DOD is a uh, download on demand. You just imagine that uh, I showed you previously that the package has uh, so many dependencies, right? But we don't want to have a whole data mirror or root mirror or whatever it is, mirror. Or we only want to plot. We only want to fetch the, the, the required dependencies. So they have a design for the DOD. DOD is a demon auto the fetch the missing dependencies on the remote. So this one don't need a much space on your server. So here is a script you can set up the DOD. Then you just go to the uh, OPS test directory. And you can find that the script is called uh, test DOD1. So you just uh, no. From the script, you can see that uh, the user is in text. It is a script that uh, we saw the uh, OBS backend host. The backend host there was a uh, OBS API. So we do this. Let's do this. And then this one, this script will automatically set up DOD and then also fetch a package for hello from Debian and then upload into the project it's set up for you. And after you launch this script, the DOD is being configured and the hello package will follow. So now you go back to the uh, OBS and we reload the package and you can see, okay, the DOD has been configured and also there's a, a project already you know, created. When you go inside the project, and you can see, oh, the hello package is, is a player already and it starts to uh, shows that the distribution is good and it starts like view the binary packages. But now it shows that the uh, uh, rope is because they, the DOD is need to take some time to download the packages. You see that how many packages um, more than one hundred package view dependency situation. So just wait a while, it comes to your bandwidth and then it comes on your computer. Yeah. You will have package and then start with you can see it used on the application. Okay, that's the introduce that uh, the OPS components. Uh, so that if, if you want to manage your uh, OPS infrastructure, then you should have a basic idea about this. So basically, the component has uh, three parts. The one part is that the web content is a, is a Ruby Rails app. It's what we call a SQL database. And this is a, we call it OBS API. And also in the the package can also make an OBS API. And then the backend services have two different backend services. One is the OBS server. And OBS server is uh, the one on the demons to manage those kind of uh, demons view packets on the server and backend. And then the OBS worker is actually the, the, the computer power to do everything. The, the worker is like every time you fetch a uh, clean shoot and build a machine. So the OBS worker can run on different applications. So you can do different applications for the right packages. And then uh, there's another piece of tools to manage those. You can use the, the web GUI to do the configuration or setup. And also you can use the OBC is coming out. You can see the OBC coming out for uh, example. Uh, previously in uh, the, the, the DOD test script. It's very simple. You can see that how I set up the DOD, how I fetch and upload the package. So I can do some proof here. 
And those are because they make them we use as a lazy type of bone compound. So in Debian, we use this uh, uh, input. So we also create a input parking. So you can use single lot of input syntax to upload your source packet. So here, let's see the workflow of the OSIS command. So here is the example. The first that you want to use the OSC, you should use the, uh, this command to complete uh, the SSL from and also your account. And after this command, then you will generate the OSC RC file in your home directory. So here we just uh, example we use uh, an account. If you have to create your account, obviously you can use your account right here. And enter the password. And if your password is correct, you get the function like uh, this uh, soft sign certificate. Yeah. And then just complete those certificate. Okay, and then you can use the OSC CO. CO means uh, check out. Think of like uh, the, the, the CBS command, right? So you check out uh, the text package. And the text uh, project. The project contains the model package. So you can see that the text project you have to check out. And this text project was previously generated and created by the DOD test script. And you can check out the, the source package. And now you get the key that the source package will permanently stay in the package names as source packages. And we use the alien package command to extract the source package. Once you extract that, you go inside. You see that uh, the folder to the inside, you see the folder content of this package. And now you can do the, uh, you know, for example, you do some modification for the source package or the update or new version or whatever. Right? And then after that, you can, uh, if you don't have a data package here, we can uh, look at some here. There's a data has a name called maintain the guy. This is a very, very simple uh, documentation to uh, show you how to best read the data package, how, to, how it works. Uh, if you want to see the more detail, you can uh, look at the developer reference and also data policy. Okay, here I don't talk too much about the tagging part. It's focused on OBNC is uh, not public. So we go back here and you see that uh, after we uh, modify the package, then we find the change of the tagging package. So we found that this is a, a make a new revision. Okay, that's the, okay, we have handed the uh, uh, class A1. That's the revision for the OBS uh, thing. Okay, and then we save the change log, and then we use this data uh, package command to build the source package. And after the source package built, then we go back to the previous uh, folder, and then we see that uh, two different versions. One is the old one, one is the one with the class A1 generated. Then in this uh, folder, we use the OSC command. You uh, drop the, the, the old one, and we use the OEC AR. AR is add and remove. So we will immediately update uh, the source packaging in the CBS, and now we can upload. So we do uh, OCS CI. CI is a commit command. And that means that the uh, commit messages are just being uploaded. Okay, and then we go back to uh, the web device to check the progress. And you can see that the, the new revision has been uploaded to OBS and started. More uh, different architecture, different speed. So once you build it, you can go to it. You can see that the, the build message, if it fails, then you can see the failed uh, build on source package. Okay, this is an example for the OSC input plugin. So we, we also said we uh, get the, the source package. And 
then the first package we do uh, the LS command, see that the package is there, and we do uh, OAC, B group. And then there's a test project, and then most of the DSC file. We use this command, it automatically upload the source package to the test project. Okay, the same way, if you go back to the front page, and you can see that the recent update, you check the status. And the status, you can see, um, there's a conversable uh, because they are uh, missing uh, dependencies. So you DOD will handle that and then try to catch those for you. Okay, and after I introduce this, we can also share some ideas about how we can optimize those inbox functions that will work. But what we do that we have uh, uh, also a software called Merge LMS. This is uh, uh, our software, Merge LMS, and keep tracking the upstream. For instance, uh, you have a, a software product and based on one of the upstream distributions, or for example, specific one of the versions. And then always we want to keep changing update, update, update. If you want to have those kind of updates also integrate your product, then you can use this software to do automatic configuration and then fetch the new update and then the software will do three merges for you. And after the merge, you generate the source package and upload into OBS. So you can see if this update is used or not on OBS before you let your production uh, password. So here is example that, uh, you know, in this uh, package uh, submitted by the large office. So you can see uh, and also uh, found a good, good comment. Okay, and also back check hook. So you have some back check there, right? You can also uh, integrate uh, the OBS with your back tracker. So here is an example. Uh, we, we use uh, uh, OBS to trigger the updated status on the back tracker. So we can notify the QA to do the test. And we automatically uh, update status, automatically do a reassignment for the test. And after the QA do the assignment test, us, if it is a fact, we have converted the, the, the package. If you fail, okay, you can also message some messages and then we send back to you, make a quiz before we turn into a promotion. And also, you can also integrate with uh, Jenkins to view the, the package on page. Here is an uh, example. Uh, we, we, we want to view the package on page. Here is an uh, example we fetch that uh, the package is already on page and start to view the source package. And source package, you get Jenkins generated. And that means we will automatically submit uh, the source package to OBS. You can even uh, view the whole distribution image in a package with Jenkins. That's what we do here. The Jenkins will check the, 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 the script. The script will start to view the image. And it will fetch all the binary package. Binary package is uh, uh, on the OBS repository and run the script. Okay, and then, uh, also we can integrate with uh, Lava to run the ultimate test on the HL where And Lava is a project behind the kernel CI. So it's just takes uh, the kernel that boots on the HL hardware. And this one we can just um, imagine that the previously test script to do the description image, right? Then you can have a Lava automatic boot image on HL hardware and see if that works. Okay, let's do the uh, recap. So my talk is uh, going to end here. So in my talk, now you will learn that how is the benefit when using this kind of fast to help you build better. So set the time for your team. Right? And remember that uh, um, you know how to do the setup. It's very easy to stash the body image. Right? And we don't go into it. And also the command, which 
show you a book for a very easy, simple time. Like, like, that's the thing about the people type of And also, I'll explain to you that the obvious components, so you can have an idea of how to do that now, to sort of do the optimization to create your development. Okay, so my talk ended here, and I need to say that the uh, day one for the boss, without those people's help, I cannot make the, uh, this package a good idea, and then also cannot uh, continue here with this uh, talk. Uh, has anybody got any question? So, as I understand, I think OBS works only for Debian-based, only, or alter Linux architecture. Does it work? Um, OBS is developed by OpenSUSE, right? So it's used to Debian-based only. And we use this software so we contribute some edges to upstream to OpenSUSE to make it work with Debian. And we still have some handy patches there. And those packages are, uh, patches are already in the Debian package, so it's easy to use the Debian package. But also be aware that the Debian package is, uh, is not the same like the uh, one from OpenSUSE. It doesn't have the upstream support. So I don't encourage you to run such services with Debian package on the public. I think that uh, uh, because the uh, um, upstream development moves very fast on the really well packages. But Debian is, uh, remains like a, a stable release, but uh, keep maintained a long time. So for this one, I encourage that just use uh, the local container internal network, not export outside. Mm, thank you. Yeah, that, and then OBS is support that the uh, you know, RPM based distribution, ArcMillions, and Dalia. And there's so many other distributions here. If you want to see the more detail, I encourage you can look at the, the OpenSUSE uh, website. And also they have a, 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 a group there. You can use that group to understand how to do the more innovation set up for years. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Andrew Lee. Uh.